Okay, we are back on and going here. Um, if you're catching our videos in order, I know our last uh, part four had a little technical interruption there. And so this is picking up the final part <clears throat> of it here. Uh, as you guys are joining back on here, I know some of you were with me live here just a minute ago when it things cut out but i didn't didn't tool anything while we were away went ahead and pick back up <clears throat> with our live here but what i'm doing now on these flower centers we've gone by and just hit the the main center down and now i'm going back and lining that center now rather than using a a larger lining tool brian yes thank you welcome back yeah yeah we are we are back and rolling now so you guys didn't miss anything i didn't tool anything while we we're away we threw those centers down and now we're coming back this is my vertical line thumbprint this is a smaller one and i'm using this in place of a center liner and i'll get that slight a little better position here again there we go that's a little better all right we're gonna i'm being real careful not to hit that center itself but i'm wanting to throw a little bit of shading away from that center uh out towards the edge hey there paul russ you must have got mad and hit the camera <laughs> yeah no i uh just one of those good technical things i had kind of messed up and forgot to kick the the do not disturb on the on the phone so when i went live on youtube it'll do that if if you get a if you get a phone call in during a during a live it'll cut it out like that so i don't know i'm curious i noticed when things froze up you guys were able to still comment did everything did the whole line freeze up was were you able to still hear audio at all or was everything just frozen, but you were still able to comment? I'd be kind of curious to hear on your end what that looks like or sounds like. Chat only. Okay, Brian, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, it wouldn't even let me comment. Like, I was trying to jump on and even do a comment. So just kind of let you guys know, like, hey, hang with me. We'll be right back. But it wasn't letting me do much all right now as i'm putting these in don't worry we're not done with our centers yet i'm gonna go through and and catch these ones down here i'm just gonna keep from rotating there as much uh, Uh, let's see, Russ, how can I send you an email with a project I want you to see and talk to you about? Um, the, my email is mealingjoe at yahoo.com. So M-E-L-I-N-G-J-O-E at yahoo. Uh, and you can shoot me an email there and um i should be able to should be able to check out and see see what you got going all right after we just about have this shading done around these centers uh, and then we're going to come back and do two more steps on our flower centers that are going to really, really help tie those together. All right. There we go. I figured you'd have to get a pin there and get ready now. Okay, so that email is mealingjoe, M-E-L-I-N-G-J-O-E, at Yahoo. Um, 
Joe, I have a question. Why do you use the seed at the edge of the stem? Is it purely decorative mark? Um, yeah, the, the seed, so right down here, like these seeds that I throw down there in those stems. Um, yeah, it's just something I've done over time. It's nothing you have to do, obviously, uh, but just throws it there at the end of the seed pod. Something else helps help set that that stem apart from the other vine work in there um and yeah it's been been doing it for doing it for years in most most of the flower stems some of them i won't but majority of them you see see i do them in there okay now i'm gonna go back to this xx steep checkered bevel <clears throat> this this really steep bevel and I'm going to come back into my flower centers here on these petals. And I want to re-bevel those petals right down to that center. Try not to hit the center itself. But we're going to pull those petals all the way down to the center. Work our way up. I'm gonna go ahead and do this on all these flowers before we get to our last step on those flower centers. Bless you. <laughs> All right, and I don't know, right before we cut out, Miss Connie was trying to ask a question. I don't know if you're back on here or not, but. If you are, go ahead and shoot that question over. It didn't come through when you were trying before. <laughs> hope he didn't sneeze and get his leather right now i think he's taking taking a break from his tool in there for a minute so he's he's doing all right <laughs> tried to get get back in and i saw her ask you to check the pm okay i'll check for a message on that thank you brian yeah i didn't see that beep in earlier so i have to go look for it okay so that's the other way too uh russ you're asking me about getting sending some pictures or whatnot uh if you're on facebook or instagram you can check check us out there too and and message through there um facebook will be at uh 23 plus so 23 plus uh and then instagram is going to be 23 plus dot leatherwork so 23 plus dot leatherwork now lastly on these flower centers i'm gonna come back and just sharpen up that center helps that center to pop you can see the difference between like this one and this one i haven't hasn't got it yet let's so watch this we get in there sharpen that back up really kind of brings that to life there so the same thing on these two bigger centers i'm gonna 
reset, sharpen that one back up. Uh, Paul, does it help to push the flower from back of the piece with a modeling tool after using the pedal lifters? Um, you know, you sure can do some of that, kind of that, get into that inverted carving thing, you know, to really bring it up and out to life. You'd have things wet down good and, and pushing up from that backside and plugging that in there. There's, that's a whole nother, you know, I think a whole nother art form with, um, with doing the leather work and the tooling is, is some of that plugging up from the back. Um, all the stuff that you're seeing me do here is all from, from the top side, obviously. So we haven't, uh, haven't messed with, with doing a lot of that plugging from the back for, for tooling purposes. Um, we'll plug some other stuff, but not for, for tooling. You always see me going just from the top here. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to this round bevel here. It's my checkered round bevel. And I'm going to use this. I told you before, but I use it as a lifter. And so we're going to come around. And on the inside, some of these curves here. You see, it just kind of lifts the edge of that, that pedal up right there. Brings a little more definition here. As we work, work up through here, not only just doing that on the flower petals, but occasionally in this vine work, there'll be a couple spots in this pattern where I like to get back underneath there and pick that up. And it's just that, again, that extra little touch. side of those really helps <laughs> showing off that's funny yeah this is this little tool here it'll it'll sure help a lot so rush you have to add this to your tool list now yeah. got you in on the thumbprints now I have to be in on those round bevels now, too. <laughs> there we go. Oh, getting, getting up out of frame on you guys there. Try to keep this rotated around. Seeing this here, I got a. Oh, where'd my other? There it went. Bevel's hiding on me. I'm gonna sharpen this line up here too. Had to catch that one while I saw it. I saw that earlier, but I had lost it again, so there it is. <laughs> oh, okay, Raz, you're already on it. You got. You already got all three of them. Connie, you're back. All right. Uh, what size is the large round bevel? I have a size two one. Um, you know what? So this, I'm not. I'd have to check his catalog to know for sure. But I, I think I have the biggest one and the smallest one. But I'm not positive. Um, I'd ha I'd honestly have to go check the catalog. For some reason, I thought he only had. Maybe three si three sizes, maybe four sizes in that. I'm not sure. But I have the largest one and the smallest one, I'm pretty sure. Um, and the one I'm using now is my small one. Uh, 
Okay, Paul is saying this is a two. The Paul is my big one a two or the small one? Uh, just got ordered. I just ordered three not too long ago. Yeah, they're great tools. I love them. All right. Uh, Having kind of a quick little once over, see if there's any any other little spots I want to use this in. Sometimes on the, the inside of some of this vine work. Russ, the big one is a two. Okay, that's kind of what I was thinking, but um, awesome. So the big one's a number two. All right, check around here. Double check. It's nice just to kind of sharpen up some of those lines on the inside there. All right. Let's put that round bevel away. And check. Moisture's still feeling pretty darn good. Oh, Connie, just check catalog. They come one, two, three, four. Oh, okay. Well, I'll have to do some comparison then and seeing because I'm not. Now I'm not positive. Got me, got me second guessing here. Not sure which side, but um, I know there's, I know there's one or two sizes in between those two that I have. So, all right. Now for the backgrounds, I'm gonna go ahead. <laughs> oh man connie now you got rust buying more tools i don't think it takes much to talk them into it though sounds like all right now sometimes you go along all the tooling and looking over and stuff that we've done um, and i can still find a spot that hey forgot to shade that little piece on the inside here and I haven't hadn't seen that till now when I'm going to do our backgrounds now some of these little background spots are gonna get pretty tight so we gotta do our do our best to walk these bar grounders around there. Uh, if you're not comfortable with the bar grounder, then a matte backgrounder may be the way to go for you on this particular pattern. Um, because it's it's definitely not a super easy pattern to use the bar ground drawn um, where there's the background spaces aren't necessarily all just nice triangle shape spaces especially with these with these flowers um, the some of the tips on the edge of the petals go into the middle of a bar ground or a background space so it makes it a little harder to get around same thing right here um, you know those in the majority of the patterns that i put out not quite as quite as tight and intricate and i also typically look for my backgrounds um i try to make those all more of the you know either half circle kind of like these two here or just a nice triangle space like this that lend well to filigree where you actually cut out the background space um, just to give people that option uh, point the end of it to the camera place oh yeah this tool here so this this is uh one of the bar grounder sets 
This one is the five seed number 30 for sizing. It's like the only tool I think that he marks the size on. So uh, this one is the, the number 30 for sizing. But yeah, most of, most of the most of the patterns I do in the background space, I do try to try to make that where you do have the option to filigree if you'd like to. Um, just kind of out of habit too, as I'm drawing, try to draw those for versatility. But this particular one, I, I just kind of wanted to have some of this point uh, pointier tips on the flowers there and kind of knew I was leaving the leaving the bounds of a good filigree pattern but just wanted a really neat little intricate pattern to go around for this cross here uh, you you have this tool is that what you're saying <laughs> And I'm shocked. I bet your toolbox pretty impressive there, Russ. Okay, trying to kind of methodically work through these background spaces so I don't accidentally miss one. Started on this. Uh, branch of the cross coming up here working my way around back to the center and then we'll come out this other branch to the side as well Paul I would agree with you my I mean that it's I think it sure is personal preference you know on that the mat backgrounder versus the bar grounder but yes I as far as personal preference goes, I share that with you. I think it's, um, I think overall it's a kind of a crisper, neater look to me, but yeah. You know, that's, that is a, just an opinion. And that's one thing that we know of as of late. Everybody has an opinion. Okay. I'm doing that check there, making sure I haven't missed any spots. Now we'll start rolling down towards the bottom of this as well. I get to this point in the pattern I start getting excited because as soon as I get these backgrounds done then we'll go to decorative cuts which for me is my favorite part of the pattern not uh, not necessarily just because like oh hey that's the last step you're done but <clears throat> just because I feel like it uh, it really brings things to life when you start putting those decorative cuts in there. Or at least it has the opportunity to bring it to life. I remember I used to, my decorative cuts before when I was tooling, man, you get done and it's like, hey, easy there, easy there, that, that cow is already dead. You know, get to hacking away at it with the decorative cuts. Looks like you're trying to butcher it still. But it uh, took some time learning and getting getting over 
over that and get into a little more refined look, but I think we're getting there now. Uh, Russ, you've got some good eyesight. I have to use jewelry glasses, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Man. I used to see people wearing glasses, tooling and whatnot, you know, or take them out to, to tool or take them out to read something, you know, read a menu. It's like, man, really? You can't see that? And now I find myself reaching for mine <laughs> a lot more often. Uh, you said before decorative cuts are an artist's signature i agree with you it's the best part yeah it uh you know you can really i think when once you get you know get an eye for it and start looking um you you know that's where you can really start telling people's uh styles like you say that signature that's a and it's a great way of putting that, but um, yeah, everybody kind of starts developing that own style and has some certain things with those decorative cuts. And you could even have people like try to decor decorative cut something the same, like here, run these cuts and try this. And you know, say, put three cuts in that pedal. They're all going to do it a little bit different. Oh, Connie, you are magnifiers to tool. That's, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I don't think that's a bad, bad idea. You gotta be careful, like the first time you put to put glasses on to tool, though. So I was tooling for a long time without them at all, and then I started wearing them, and I was like, "Man, I better step up that tool and clean that up a little bit. It really kind of looks like crap when I put these glasses on." <laughs> but it's like, gosh, I hope I hope people aren't wearing glasses when they look at it. <laughs> Got talking about glasses and people looking at looking at your work. Funny story, but uh, I don't know if you know Pedro Padrini. Uh, Pedro is amazing tooler and saddle maker. Um, and I had to meet Pedro. He was working here at Hamley's for a while, um, and he's one of the guys on the TCAA or whatever all the super fancy tooling and craftsman guys um but pedro super nice guy and he, he, he wears glasses all the time and he and he's like and he's uh gosh what is pedro french i think he he's got a <laughs> he's got his glasses on and he's oh joe i want to see your let me look at that let me look i want to see that see that piece of work and he's you know standing in the shop there and he goes puts a second pair of glasses over top of his first pair. It's like, no, no, Pedro, I don't want you being able to see that good when you're looking at it. Uh, what weight of all do I use? 20 ounce. Yep, Paul's got you there. So that, yep, 20 ounce is what this one is here. Um, I suffer from severe migraines, and I'm, if I'm not careful, I'll get a bad one. Yeah, that can it can really put a lot of strain on on your eyes too you know um okay the other thing i'm gonna do with with my bar grounder here too is on the outside of this pattern now this is another thing it's a small thing but i think it uh kind of touches things off a little bit but in these little crevices here as i come back in and tip that tool back Kind of walk that down. It just gives that little extra definition um, in and around that pattern there. I uh, just got a 24 ounce. They were out of the lighter, but 
hope it ain't ain't too bad yeah that uh shoot it'll at least get you by for a while you know if you decide it's too heavy then to tool it'll i probably it'll at least be really good for like border stamps basket stamp that type of thing um or using on your punches and whatnot so it even if you decide later that like oh hey i kind of i really do want to get a a 20 ounce as well like you'll you'll still find use for that 24 but i bet it won't be too bad for you Getting around here. Some of these little, you know, the little final touch things, you know, touching off these spaces with that bar grounder, putting the little lifter underneath your pedals, and putting that stop in within your ridges. You know, it's those little extra things that take a little bit of time, but. Boy, enough of the, when you put enough of the little pieces together, it sure helps the big, big picture, you know? I think any one of, one little thing doesn't make a huge difference, but enough little things and it sure does. All right, backgrounding's done. Time to get the swivel knife out. Let's have some fun doing some decorative cuts here. Uh, Connie, I had a question about the barge on my key rings. Hard to explain on here. Send a PM with photo. If you could look and let me know. Just a quick yes or no. Thanks. Okay, perfect. Yeah, Connie, I will uh, check that out here when we get get done with this video here. kind of slipping around here on this fine work and doing a little more of what I would call the the simple decorative cuts on these smaller vines and then even on this swirl we'll come around Pull that one. Main thing on these decorative cuts is always having a little bit of curve to them, right? I don't want to. I don't want to have just straight little hash lines because um, that's not adding any flow. So we want to, with all the the decorative cuts, we want to add flow and not take away from flow. So having a little curve to those cuts. Starting deep with them, fading off to light. This is going to be a, a big key as well. The other thing is you're running them, I'm not connecting those cuts even like here. You can see they're not connected and they're not going to run into each other. If they were, if that cut was to continue, they would, um, they may kind of slightly merge into one, but they wouldn't actually like perpendicular run into each other. That's going to be something that'll take away from that flow. Oh yeah, it's going to look good. Okay. Couldn't help myself. I had to get into that flower petal a little bit on that one. But I'm trying to keep rolling around here with this vine work. 
again being a little bit strategic about this as far as moving around in a following the flow of this vine work one section at a time um, just a little bit of a strategy to not accidentally miss any of our decorative cuts Continue working through getting this vine work done and then we'll bounce back and catch our flower petals. And with the vine work or with the decorative cuts, excuse me, there's not not one right way to do it, right? Um, just like Paul and I were kind of talking there earlier about the the artist's signature. You know, there's there's some fundamentals to the decorative cuts, right? Just like with any of this tooling, there's some fundamentals to follow um, that can sure help you. But, you know, whether I put one, you know, one of these little vines that come off, maybe I put two cuts in and maybe one I stack a few cuts there and one longer cut that doesn't really matter um, it's it's a following some of the fundamentals starting your cuts deep fading them to light having some curve to them those fundamentals but um you know pulling them towards the flow of your pattern but how many cuts exactly where um, different patterns of cuts that's all going to be more of that kind of artist signature to it like we were talking uh kelly will this pattern be going into the classroom uh no this is not a classroom Ooh. whoops See, I gotta watch on what I kick. Hang on just a second. I'll answer that question after I pick this light up. Oh, man. Whoops. Hey, you know those lights we talk about? The big, cool, fancy ones? Um, that help? They're great lights, and it turns out they're pretty durable. You can slam them down against the ground, uh, bang them off the wall, and they just keep running. Hold up. Pretty good. So you're welcome for that research I just did for you. Now we know. Um, anyways, let's see here. Where are we at? Um, talking about whether this pattern was going in the classroom. No, this pattern is not going to be in the classroom. Um, this one will actually be available this evening. This is one of the specialty patterns. Um and so this will be available on the website for purchase um, again here in a little bit. And we talked about, uh, <laughs> Paul, disclaimer, do not try this at home. Yeah, no, no try kicking lights over at home. Not good. Um, the, we talked about running a discount. Kelly, I, gosh, I'm getting confused on my videos here but i think maybe that you uh you were on the video when we were talking about running a possible discount on the um on the patterns like a bulk pricing thing and good news is i figured out how to do that so the and i'll put out some information on that as far as uh, if any of you guys are signed up for 
emails. It's not email marketing is not something that I really utilize a lot. However, I would like to put out some information, um, help people out when I can there. And the bulk pricing that we have for the specialty patterns is you get uh, buy three or more specialty patterns in one purchase. It's like I, I can't go back and accumulate things. But uh, so moving forward, if you have three or more specialty patterns in a purchase, uh, you get 20% off and that will automatically show up in your shopping cart online there. Um, so a little bit of a built-in discount now for some bulk pricing on that. Uh, Connie, I'm still struggling with starting deep and fading on my cuts. Um, so one thing, Connie, I would say start deeper. Um, you know, and maybe that means that you have to kind of re-wet your leather before you are running your decorative cuts maybe. But start a little deeper and that will help help you have that room to fade out too. Um, Paul, is the online drawing course a video series? Um, it is, um, what's my best way to answer that? Yes, I, I mean, I believe I would describe it as a video series. Um, I think it's broke into like 12 different videos. If I remember right, it's been, been a while on that. Um, but, um, but I think it's, I think it's 12 different videos on that, on that course. Um, and it's, that goes from square one <laughs> and walks you all the way through uh, some of the different fundamentals there. Down the last few flowers here. One key on decorative cuts in your flowers is to make sure that you're pulling those cuts towards the center. You don't wanna get to where they pull off to the side because um, that's gonna take away from flow. So even with some curve and some arc or even kind of that squiggly little cut that I do there it's pulling down towards that center as it's as that cuts finalize in there oh man is this a coaster entry I have right here yep. oh goodness I just got a coaster um, yeah Kelly there are I do have some short um, some short drawing videos on here as well. I just got a new coaster entry just in from Jackson, it looks like. Must've been a new shipment. I gotta open this and see what it is. Oh my goodness. We got a, a round coaster coming in here, which note, if you guys are, if you guys are entering the contest, it need to be square, so know that. But we got a special round one in here acorn some flowers around there hand dyed oh love it love it we'll have to add that with the the stack of coasters we got going so yes side note if you are entering the coaster contest those are four by four inch squares so if you're watching this and gonna do that so i got my my entry, my in-house entry here, he's got some cutout coasters in here that were round that I told him he could use, so. Um, uh, MN Black Bear, is that the Minnesota Black Bear, maybe? Um, just got some tools and tried it for the first time. Well, good. Welcome to the, welcome to the craft. I hope you're having fun with it. Um, it's... I know that uh, 
it can be challenging for sure, but it, it's sure fun craft and um, there's always room for improvement as you're going. So, um, and feel encouraged too that we all started <laughs> somewhere, right? Not good at carving, good at making bags and such. Uh, well, good. So carving is going to probably just be a added little touch to some of your bags at some point, maybe. That's good. And I just heard, was that one of the carriages I just heard, bud? Yeah. Yeah, so they're, uh, they've been doing this big lead up to Roundup thing. So we got the Pendleton Roundup coming up here. Gosh, it's coming soon, right? Coaster contest and all that. But um, they've been doing this thing on Saturdays, kind of a promotional tourist type of thing. Um, they got different tours that roll through town, and part of that tour has been uh, they got a horse-drawn wagon that takes you down through town and back around. We'll come right by the shop here. So it's pretty pretty cool. Yeah, the tools take take a little while getting used to and figuring them out for sure. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna just do one more thing here as I'm looking at these flower centers here. I got these bigger ones down here, and I'm gonna touch them off. Just finalize. I'm gonna take that small little seed. We're gonna stick that right in that center there. that's gonna help that off there we go I'll touch that off there okay I think we have done it here I'm gonna check here oh Wayland Looking good. I've been out riding with my daughter. Almost missed the final steps. Well, good. I'm glad you caught it here. Um, the, this last little section of it has been broke into two videos due to some technical difficulties. But we uh, have got her finished up here. There is our tooled cross pattern. The newest specialty pattern being released it will be available up on the website uh, very shortly i'm gonna um, this is gonna get just a coat of oil over this a nice light coat of oil and we'll start working on getting that set up on the website and ready to go remember with the the digital downloads you get the actual line art to come down as well as the um, the picture of the final tooling just to kind of give reference on which side to which side to bevel and you know my intended purpose with the lines but um, you know it all depends on uh, all depends on you and your tooling it's it's gonna they I love seeing everybody tool up these specialty patterns uh, they everybody has their own twist on it so this by putting in the picture of the of my version of the tool pattern in no way am i saying this is the only way to do it but for anybody more just starting out or just needing some reference sometimes it's hard looking at a pattern if you're not the one that draw it, drew it to know exactly where things were kind of intended to be so this is meant just for reference when i when i put that in there for you guys i love seeing everybody's take on on the patterns and tooling them up uh, and i love seeing the different projects that you guys use all these specialty patterns on so that's been really fun um so black bear there what do i do with the thing like this what's that Oh, that's weird. Um, this this pattern here, um, this will wind up being hung up in the shop here. So I'll give you, before we sign off here, I will show, get this light shut off. 
Um, I'll show you over here some of these some of these other specialty patterns that have been tooled up along in here. This one's actually finished out as kind of a nicer wall hanging uh, with that dyed border and stitched edge. Um, so that's something that can be done with them. Uh, but yeah, I have several of these that are up in here just tooled up. Um, again, showing kind of showing the, the tooled version of the of the patterns. But that's what will come in with this new specialty pattern is the line art as well as the tooled picture. But I will uh, get those up and ready shortly. But I appreciate you guys hanging out here with me, spending time, interacting. Uh, and we will start working through some more patterns um, live on here as well. So take care. Have a good one, guys.